Yo, what's up? This is Omar Man here in Austin, Texas. We got my man Romeo Navarro. Boop, boop. We got a special guest today with us. We got Nagin, yes, all the way from here Brazil, by the way, of New York City. And we got none other than my man Roger Davis, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Yo, so Nagin is in town for the weekend. We're about to have a good time. And uh, just let's talk a little bit about, you know, how life is going, man. How Started are you? Started yesterday when I took a walk on uh, Sixth Street. Yeah. <laughs> solo, yeah, wow. Solo. solo. Yo, he went, he went to the to the to the other jungle. Yeah, you know, like, the under, man, other jungle. Yeah, street man. jungle. He said, "This is not like any jungle I've ever seen." <laughs> First yeah. of all, it's a pleasure for me to be here. You know, like I always say, like you know, Omar is like it's one of my huge inspirations from a long time when I started mm -hmm. this journey of breaking. And you know, just connect and hang out with you guys here, learn about your background and you as a firefighter, you know, and myself being here in Austin for the first time, you know, like it's it's I'm looking forward to not just connect with the community, but also to enjoy the place, you know, the the springs and yes. the, you know the Sixth Street yes. <laughs> and everything else. Thirty six. You know I mean? I'm down for it. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. You know, so we're so hyped to have you here, man. You know, it's gonna be a dope weekend. We got a workshop for you later today and then uh tonight we got a park jam you know wow. just to yes. hang out man break bread share food and just have fun and cypher man so Beautiful. you know it's, it's a pleasure to have you brother likewise brother yeah. thank you thank you guys yeah. let's go let's get it started let's go let's do it yeah <laughs> nice. yo so so i i guess a question <coughs> i have i have for you is just kind of like you know i don't think we've ever really talked about this and we've hung mm -hmm. out yeah, quite yeah. A, a bit of times but uh when was that time when you transitioned like you're breaking, you took your breaking mm -hmm. your skill sets and start to like make a livelihood of it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To become like what everyone calls quote unquote a, a professional, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, when did that happen for you and, and how did that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say, well, I start Capoeira in the 90s, so 1990, and then 2000, that's when I started breaking. So you were the very first person that I saw in a major event, of, <laughs> of course, Red Bull BC1. I was like, wow, Omar. You know, it's like, I want to be on that spot, you know, in a sense of like, how can I represent myself and have the opportunity to be traveling international, yeah. you know? So I look up to you, I look up to Red Bull BC1 that was coming up at the time as well. But uh, I noticed, hey, I have talent and I have something that's different, you know, because obviously my style is not going to be breaking like somebody from the US or Europe or Asia. I need to bring something new to the table. And that's what I already have, you know, I already have my background as Capoeira, you yeah. know. And um, so just put in perspective, like bringing those elements together, I say, hey, this is, is going to be an impact when I actually have the opportunity to travel. Because if I go to one competition and I stand out in the competition, I will make sure that I will stay relevant to so many other competitions. Right. So my main focus was competition as a, as a gateway for me to actually highlight my skills yeah. in a certain level. So, you know, I finished high school and I was like, you know what, it would be nice to go to college and, and study something, but also I'm an artist and I want to be able to, you know, learn and travel and, and, and live professionally with this art form. So this is around like 2005, 2006, then that's when I actually decided to project myself, you know, to the world and it happened, you know. So one of the very first events that I went international was with my crew, of course, with Tsunami All Stars and then... From there, just the organizers start inviting me direct, including Red Bull BC1, you know. So from there, I say, okay, things are, are, are going the way I want to. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard because Brazil is kind of far away from everywhere else. Yeah. So if you want to go to IBE, it's far. If you want to go to Asia and US and visas and all that things. So it made it very difficult. But I knew it was like, you know what, I'm going to pursue this. Like, uh, it's my dream and, and that's what I want to do. So next thing I know, I was already like on the, on, the, on the flow, and here I am, traveling 143 countries by now. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how, so how many years is that? Since when, like 2000, so almost yeah, 22 years? Yeah, it's breaking 22 years now. 22 yeah. years, huh? So I'm still so young, I, learning. I got a question for you. So yeah. I know we were coming back from the airport, you were telling me how, you know, you try to eat healthy, mm -hmm. don't smoke, don't drink. Yeah. Does that, you know, kind of, how you say, consistent, being healthy that's my education training. from martial arts though you know capoeira I mean? teaches you a very young early uh, early age that you have to take care of your your mind your body and your spirit so you know in a sense like my capoeira message say hey you know there's a lot of things out there in the world that doesn't serve you and what doesn't serve you push away because in order for you to you know to be a god you gotta find those steps you yes. know what i mean so like very 
educational approach mm -hmm. then this was like okay wow why am i gonna put something in my body that doesn't really help me you know so yeah. regardless what substance whatever you know it's just like more like a nutrition side of it and understanding um a lot of things in general that you can observe and, and digest yeah. you know what i mean because I, I know like you know for the future for future younger athletes mm -hmm. they need to know that what it takes to travel oh yeah and then get up early oh, yeah. in the morning and dance and compete you know there's it takes a toll in your, 100 percent, right so you need to know especially international though omar can tell you better because you know, we here, if you battle in a cypher in Austin mm -hmm. and then you go to California, freestyle session, whatever that is. But once you start going international, it's a different story. Yeah. Because, like I say, yeah, I, I might start talking about breaking competition and, and performance in aspects, right? But if I say, oh, I'm going to Saudi Arabia, yes. Pakistan. Like yes. when you just like Pakistan, I mean, just the jet lag alone. You, and exactly, yeah. Yeah. and, and understanding the go, culture right? of yeah. each country that you go, my yep. friend. Because some mm -hmm. countries, this means welcome, and for us means stop. If you go to India, you say yes, no, and maybe. That's how they do it. This is yes, yeah. this is no, this is maybe. So just like wow, there's you know a lot of cultural shock going on, and yes. the cultural shock also becomes part of who you are because you you need to understand like, hey, I, I'm in Japan. That's how it rolls out here. I mean, in Pakistan, yeah. that's how it is out here. How we were talking about you, you, you learning how to adapt. To exactly. The yeah. language, the food. You have to. You, you have to be able to adapt, you know, with the time zone, with the food and, and everything. You just have to have a knowledge of self, you know, understand what, what does it better for you, you know? Yo, talking about that, you know, like, I, I know I experienced that as well, man. Like, when, when, I was, when I was at home, I always felt like I was rooted. I still have like very strong roots to like obviously like the people I started with mm -hmm. like the people who helped me with like yeah. all of my friends who I first started like dancing with right and I always felt that was very important to like you know have strong roots right have a strong foundation and you build upon that mm -hmm. uh, but I remember like being out of the country or traveling alone and feeling alone man mm -hmm. you know like not in the sense of like loneliness but in mm -hmm. the sense of like trying to learn to understand who I am you know and I remember, like, on those long flights, man, you're traveling all over, you know, and, and you, you're in a, you know, playing with people, but you're traveling mm -hmm. alone and you're just kind of like mm -hmm. alone in your own thoughts, you yeah. know. That really helped me uh, learn about myself and who I am as an individual. And I'm just wondering, like, are there times or experiences that you had that are similar to, to that? Absolutely. Uh, but one thing I'm so grateful for is growing up in Brazil, you understand how to be connect with nature. So no matter where I'm going, I'm not like, hey, I don't have friends in, in this particular mm -hmm. town. I'm going to go to the nature because, right. you know, the water and, and the park, whatever that is, you know, is just like you're in contact with yeah. nature. So you're good to go. Yeah. That's what I was telling them about, like the springs in Austin. Yeah. If you stay a little longer. Yeah. I know you're only here till Sunday. You'll be here Sunday, but it's coming back for the Red Bull BC one side for in Austin. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so what I mean, that. like, you, when you're connected with the universe, you connect with nature, everything, you know, works in your favor. So otherwise it becomes too tiring for you because you're like, oh, I'm going to go to Tokyo. And then from Tokyo, I go to Amsterdam and just party <laughs> and just concrete and just yeah, yeah. sounds and all of the madness. It, it gets you, man. No yeah. matter how old, how young you yeah, are, yeah. you're going to, you know. So when you really have a balance, like, hey, I'm going to go to nature. Then I can go to the after party. Yeah, then I can ha hang out with the girls or hang out with the dudes and so and on. So um, yeah. I think you have to find balance, you know, and, and that's what keeps you in shape somehow yeah. no matter like what's your flow how much you travel how much you give to the community how much you give for yourself how much you're learning it's all about finding that balance you know yeah yeah absolutely yeah. You gotta recharge exactly yeah, yeah. I, I, you know there's there's things like i remember like rome always like saying forever young forever fresh you know exactly. like ever ever since we were we were we were i was a little bit younger than these guys but that always stuck with me man and i've always like have that mentality like yo your, you, you, your body gets old, mm -hmm. you know, but you preserve yourself, you know, like you yeah. said, your mind, your body, your soul, what mm -hmm. you feed, not only into your body nutritionally, mm -hmm. exactly. but, you know, taking care of your, your mental, taking care of your body, taking care of your spirit, you know, and that's something that these guys like really instilled into me. And I took that with breaking, like, okay, how do I apply my, my talent, my skill and, and, and apply that to my everyday life, you know, and then transition that into, like you said, no matter where you're at, no matter who you're with, you know, for me, it was like, eventually becoming a father and, 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 and you know, you know, loving on, on my, on my mm -hmm. children with all of those, those things I learned, but it's not easy. Right. 
you know, when uh, I came from like a, uh, what you would call like a poor background, mm -hmm. you know, and I had the same dreams as you. Yeah. Man, I want to compete. I yeah. want to travel. I want to win. I want to be sponsored. I want to do all these mm -hmm. things, right? And then when you start doing it, it's almost like a reality shock to you because it's like, damn, I'm actually doing this. I'm actually living it, right? And you're like, how did I go from from where I started to where I'm where I'm at now, you know, uh, how did you, how do you deal with that? Or, or how you know? Obviously, for me, it's very rewarding. It's blessing, right? Like, yeah. but how, how do you how do you interpret? You know? Yeah. Like for me, like I can call, I can recall my memories. Like in a sense, when I was in high school, the teachers used to say like, "Yo, it's amazing what you do, but that doesn't give you any future." Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. All of a sudden, now I'm yes. giving lecture in the same school. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and also, you know, like, same same struggle, you know. Coming from Brazil, I, my family always support me. And I was like, yo, believe in yourself. And like, you, you have talent. You make us proud because you're doing the right thing. Yeah. You're not involved with drugs. You're not involved with crimes and the wrong things. That it's much easier for you to go, you yeah. know, to that path. So I have much respect for my family for directing me that way and, and believing in my approach, you know, to, to become an artist that I became. So in that sense, uh, and of course, no sponsors, no support, you Nothing. know, like from the city, from yeah. the government or mm. anything. So, of course, you put a lot of uh, blood, sweat and tears into your yeah. art form, you know, and I'm so grateful for everything I do. And I, I hope that for the future that's coming now, it's going to be much easier, not just for us here in America or in Brazil or in Sri Lanka, you know, I think like, um, we do things to inspire, you know, yeah. so I create and inspire because this, if this happened to me, it happened to you, it might happen mm -hmm. to somebody out there in Sri Lanka that doesn't have opportunity. Yeah. Probably a kid that doesn't have a shoe, but he has his break, he has his dreams, you know, so, and for sure the future, you know, should be brighter to that particular individual, you know. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So uh, when, when, when here in, in Austin, there's like two recreation centers that we used to get down at, man. It's, Montopolis Recreation Center, mm. South Austin Recreation Center. Yeah, yeah. The Montopolis area is, is not known to be like the nicest area, you know, yeah. or back then at least, right? It wasn't like the it's, nicest. It's, it's Shout out 4-1, you it's know? Def yeah. Definitely changed. <laughs> but, Where's you know. It looks good now. <laughs> yeah, it, that is, well, they, they, they had to redo the whole recreation yeah, yeah, center. Yeah, yeah. They did, redo, redo, the, redo the whole thing. But, um, you know, Roger was the one who, who used to look out for us, man, when we used to go to those practices at, at wow. the rec recreation center, right? Shout out to Austin Parks and Rec. Yeah. And it, we had we filmed some stuff there about a year or two ago, and it was kind of surreal as well because it was like even the places that sometimes gave us a the place to showcase or, or practice our talent mm -hmm. would sometimes kick us out as well, wow. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Roger was like the one who he was always the one that was going there to to advocate for us and be like, you know, like these kids, like you said, they're mm -hmm. not in the street, mm -hmm. they're not out committing you know, crimes, they're mm -hmm. not, you know, doing or selling drugs, mm -hmm. like they're just doing something that they're passionate about yeah. and, 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 and we're cre creative about. And you, Raj, you know, like hearing, I know you've heard my story, you know, but hearing again and, and, and you know, some similarities, you know, what, what were you thinking? That's what I want to know. What were you thinking back then just watching us just as teens? Like, obviously not there yet, but mm -hmm. you know, what did you see or, or what was, you know, the reason for getting into that? And as much as we've talked, Omar, I don't think I've ever been asked that question by you or mm. anyone else. Yeah. That's really weird. But, um, <laughs> I mean, because I, I chose always not to make it about myself. Right. It, it also made it easier. I mean, in a sense to where if I was focusing on what I thought my, my goals were, the very next day I would meet someone different. It was either you or someone so else or you were going through something different. Yeah. And my short-term goals would change. So it was these big long-term goals that I set out to, to see as far as one day owning my own recreation center and in, in this town, in this mm. city, within this system, which is wow. unheard of, I had to really control what I could and just understood the parameters and the guidelines that have already been instilled for me. And you guys, each and every day, understanding that it wasn't about creating another vessel. It was about basically trying to interact with every individual figuring out what vessels you needed to be a part of yeah. so using every impromptu activity including breaking and anything else i mean a hot spot was two kids on the side of the side of the road that just looked like they were up to no good mm. 
and some people call it suspect. I mean, the words at risk were thrown mm -hmm. around for so many years. And my whole thing was they didn't know how close in age we really were. Even as a young adult, I was still at risk. There's mm -hmm. people that are 40, 50 years old that can't take care of themselves that are mm -hmm. still at risk and making very wrong decisions day in and day out that are affecting other people. How I saw the domino effect was how you guys affected me. And my goals had to go from short term, excuse me, long term to short term. And just understanding that the communities that I was supposed to be serving in and in different demographics of Austin, I had to make sure that my thoughts were engaged with you before I took them somewhere else yeah. and engaged with you before I took someone else. Because it's amazing to look back and say, these are the avenues that the department wants to push you in, but if you don't bring them something to the table with a solution, you can't just provide a problem to a large right. entity saying, this is a problem, help me fix it. But if you bring them a solution, it's up to them to accept it. So you guys really helped establish something, not only for the community, but for the dance scene and for the culture abroad. Because if you think about all the talent that we had in this town and in Texas abroad that basically just floated and you know filtered off of just the rec center practices, right. that that was something that I could not not hold on to whenever I'm being pushed and pulled to do other things. Yeah. And it wasn't about numbers, because if you think about it, you, like you say, the kids that were welcomed in were also the ones that were shooed out. Yeah. Mm. And my whole thing was, you can always service the kids that walk through that door. So if you're not out in the community bringing in and continuously making it something to win, it's a revolving door and letting people know where there's a place to be, then it's gonna stop like anything else. Yeah. And you have to take people from where they're at, at their, that very time, not where you want them to be. And patience is something that all the young B-boys and B-girls help me work on because <laughs> I Yo, this guy used, this guy used to pick us up in a 15-passenger yeah, 15 15 van, bro. Passenger van. Like, wow. just like 15 of oh, us. We and we'd be, in, we'd be in the back, I'm like, not, like, not like trying to flip it, bro. He's like, yo, yeah. Yeah. stop. Like, wow. Oh, no, I pulled that van over multiple times. I've gotten out. I've actually drug a pe few people out of the van <laughs> saying, look, I'll pick you up on the way back. <laughs> I might have went back. Might have went back, but no. Um, the the stories uh, the stories are all all true about that van. I mean, you can't make stuff up like that. Mm -hmm. But we bonded because you had to go from point A to point B, and my big thing was getting these kids out of their own environment, mm -hmm. new experience, have them experience something different. So I mean, I'm sure sure you can relate. I mean, just, 100%. just just leaving leaving your country, leaving your town. And just knowing what's back there for you, like, mm -hmm. do you do you have any go and understanding that you came up on your own, you pushed your own envelope, you took yeah. the upbringing and as far as the structure that was given to you at a, certain, at a young mm -hmm. age that a lot of kids did not have, and totally. remember you had to be receiving of that. So going back, let's put you back there ten years from now, not just now. I mean, do you have any plans to do anything along the lines of providing activities and structure? that is not there for the community that, that you serve and the community that, that raised you? It's a beautiful thing because when you do from the heart to help somebody else, yeah. you know, God is watching you. Right. So it doesn't matter what you do. I was talking to him yesterday, like, like yeah, I'm a firefighter, you know? Like, yeah. I'm like, dude, this is a freaking amazing job. Like, just, it's not just as a job, but imagine like the adrenaline and just like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go there and save somebody or yeah. uh, save a cat or whatever that is. And like saving lives is already something that's, you know, it's a blessing, like an angel, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I see myself maybe in the same way, mm -hmm. you know, if I can have an impact on one person or a hundred or a ten or a, a thousand, you know, that's, that's my goal, you know what I mean? Because I, I just want to, to give back the best way I can do it, you know? It might be in a workshop, it might be in a, the way I walk or the way I talk, I don't know. Yeah. You know, if I inspire somebody to be a better person, you know, that's that's my goal. So you can take that as a, you know, as a community thing, say, hey, this is, you know, you impact like few lives here, but also for the future, 10 years from now, how it's going to be, I don't know. But one thing I know for sure is that I want to continue with that path, you know, of helping people out. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. It's, it's contagious, man. <coughs> It's, it's embedded in you. Yeah. I mean, I've seen you. I mean, definitely followed your, your career and your path. And 
it's just amazing. I mean, you, you definitely see B-boys and B-girls that are out there that it's not about whether or not you're liked or whether or not you know you're, the style. It, it's, you, you see how people respond to just your presence mm. before, during, and even after you dance. So that's something to say that uh, your heart's definitely in the right spot. So we just definitely appreciate you adding to just the dance itself because your, your individuality <laughs> is something that people will try and emulate for years, mm -hmm. which I think is a good thing. Uh, normally it's like, oh man, don't try and look like him. Don't try, don't, <laughs> don't like do you. And then telling someone to do them and them not yeah. knowing who they are. Yeah. But, and I'm sure you've basically just adapted. I mean, as far as being a hybrid, what, what dance style, and this is on camera, this is recorded. What dance style have you been exposed to that you never thought you'd do Something maybe we don't even know that's yeah. on camera. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing because yeah. if, it, look, Brazil is the most diverse country, I would say, when it comes to music. Yeah. Because, let me put it this way, outside of Africa, Brazil is the biggest African diaspora that exists. Outside of Japan, same thing. Outside of Korea, yeah. whatever. Like, Brazil is like, it's a melting pot of so many different things, you know. So we're exposed to, from samba, to frevo, to capoeira into so many different elements and, 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 you know, like I could go for days just talking about Brazil. So, you know, in Brazil, you grow up like from so many different music, dance styles. And then of course I was like, you know what? If it comes from the diaspora from Africa, what else is out there that the African people had a contribution to the world, yeah. including hip hop, you know what I mean? So if I may say styles, you might heard about, okay, yeah, breaking, Capoeira, house, popping, locking, whatever. But now to the point that I am, like traveling all these countries, I go to Senegal. What is in Senegal? Sabar. What is Sabar? What dance style is that? How do they listen to the music? Mm -hmm. And you know, how do they follow the drummer or the drummer follow the dancer? Yeah. Or if I go to somewhere in Azerbaijan, what's the Azerbaijan style of, you know, the, their spinning, like the guy's <laughs> spinning like ridiculous fast, like wow. Mm -hmm. So everywhere I go, I tend to learn a little bit of those culture, you know? And I try to understand as much as I can, yeah. you know what I mean? It's not just like, oh yeah, I took a class, good. But I was like, hey, what this <laughs> means to you? You know, what, what, what's the history behind this? That's it. And then they might say, yo, we dance this way because, you know, during the time that we didn't have rain coming from the sky and then we had to pray. And it's like, wow, it's a spiritual thing. It's not about the step, but like the step you're doing over a minute, it's like you, 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 it's a prayer, so that's that's powerful. So every time I'm gonna do a judge solo or something, that yeah. step might come, you know, be there in t ten seconds. I was like, wow, yeah, I'm praying to this particular area right here. You know what yeah. I mean? So it becomes holistic, becomes a spiritual thing. So uh, I cannot describe so many different dance styles, but I can call dance as a healer because that's what it is. You know what I mean? And the funny thing about that, I recently worked with Erica Badu. Nice. You know. And then she came up to me and said, like, hey, the reason you're here is because you're like a shaman. You're a healer. Like, that's what she told me. Like, say, like, I don't see you doing your amazing break dancing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're sick as b-boy, but, you know, when you dance, you're expressing, like, the healing. Because just me watching, I'm healing myself. And just by, by seeing your intentions, like, wow, okay, maybe my expression mm -hmm. with my dance, it's like a combination from so many different sources of different elements in, in dance styles that I've been learning and exposed to, you know, by exactly. traveling. So, yeah. 100 and how many countries? 43. So in 143 yeah, countries, think about those solos. <coughs> think about just how you've represented. Give me one country and the style or the dance that you felt that you had to do and you express just out of respect, mm -hmm. just out of respect. I know you've got plenty, but just New York, is that, bro. Is that, is that, is that, nah, it's that dance yeah. style he was doing last night. It's New York. <laughs> Street, yeah. Not the one you did on Dirty Six. <laughs> Yo, New York is something special because, yeah. um, you know, it's literally, you go to a park, you just see people dancing, <laughs> no matter like if they're, if they're 75 years old, eight years old, they just got out of the job, whatever. It's like, I can feel like people getting down yeah. You know, that means so much for them. It's like a religion, you know what I mean? I mean, I've seen so many places that has the same connection, yeah. but like New York takes me there. You really? Know? That's why I actually, when I first moved to New York, you know, I've always been interested about breaking. 
-hmm. But when I got into house clubs, like the house club culture, it was like this is something special. This I never felt anything like this before. Like going to shelter or funk box or you know so many different yes. clubs. I just like <laughs> yo and the elements from the music and like the levels that the DJ is spinning and like for hours and everybody drinking water. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> oh these people being here dancing for three days straight. They Get take it. a nap, they wake up, they Get dance, it. and like Get everybody's healthy. Just you know, like really understanding how to you know to have the the spirituality within the the, the club culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I gotta give shout outs to New York City because <laughs> it's a special place to be. Yeah, that's 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 how we came up, man. And uh, and uh, I came up going out with these guys, man. Even when I was like too young, too young to get into into the clubs. You know what I mean? You better and dance. these guys were trying to try, 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 try to get me in, man. And sometimes <laughs> it would hey, actually be on Sixth Street. Sometimes, <laughs> some, sometimes I could get in, sometimes I couldn't. But yo, that's that's something that that Rome always talked to us about too, man. Like, yo, th what's crazy is uh, like we'll go out sometimes. Well, we don't always get to hang out, you know. Mm -hmm. But we'll go out sometimes. We'll get down. And and like last month we had we had that show. Remember we had we had a show for South by Southwest, man. And this dude was dancing more than all the younger dancers, bro. And he's like, yo, <laughs> of course. he's like, I, I, if I'm getting down this much, y'all better get down, yeah. you know. It's a different vibe. It is. It's, it's just, just that just vibe. Different vibe. And that you you go you can always go home anytime that the, that I know this boy's in the club. I don't care how tired I am. It's just that energy. It's like up. Oh, it's a wrap. You gotta support. You gotta yeah. support the rounds. You gotta support the energy. You gotta keep so, the cipher going. I mean, that's that's it. It's the release that we're all looking for, and well, you um, get it. I, I took Capoeira for like maybe mm -hmm. like six, almost ten years, off and on, in and out. Mm -hmm. But then um, every uh, bastetado, mm -hmm. some maestros from Brazil will come in. Mm -hmm. But these guys are in like sixties, man. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? And they will dance. They will sing. They will play Capoeira. They'll hang out, they'll go out, and I don't see them getting tired. Yeah, we call, we call them bambas. <laughs> yes. That's why, okay, if you practice any martial arts, if you practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for seven, eight years, you become a black belt. If you practice Kung Fu, you become yeah. a master. If you practice, you know, like, usually it takes six or seven years for you to master, uh, you know, in a way, for you to get the highest level. The rank, in that. yeah, yeah. But in Capoeira, my friend, I play for 30 years, and I'm just an instructor. There's professor. Mestrando, mestre. So it means like it's a lifetime <laughs> dedication yes. to the art form because the art form is so complex. Because let me talk a little bit about capoeira. If you talk about capoeira as music, in fact, you need to play the instruments, you need mm -hmm. to sing, you right. need to do all of that. But how, okay, I cannot go to a store and buy a berimbau. Capoeirista, they have to know how to make a berimbau. Mm -hmm. And a berimbau, you have to go to the jungle, you need to know what kind of tree, you have to chop like this because it's for the environment so the tree can grow. So just that. And then, okay, the wire, how you take the wire? From a tire of the car, you know, uh, the, the music box, we call cabasa, you need to know where to find. Like, just to create the berimbau, it's already like so much knowledge that you have to have as biologist, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You're not even so. talking about martial arts, you're just like, yo, straight up, Handcraft is straight up knowledge from the earth that's been passed through thousands of years because Berimbau is originally from Africa, even though Capoeira is 100% Brazilian because it was invented in Brazil as disguise because of slavery. Yeah. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. So just to talk about that, the Berimbau, Atabaque, Pandeiro, and then the songs, what the song means, you know, and then the rhythm, the cadence, the most important is cadence because as a breaker, we listen to music like, oh, the BPM from this break beat is 121, whatever. This is 84. In Capoeira, there's something called cadence because the mm -hmm. rhythm might be so fast, but you navigate into an element that's like, it gives you like the balance that's just like, it's 100% connect with everything that exists. So it's a deep thing to talk <coughs> about it. Yeah. And yes. that's why you're saying like, because the masters, somebody that's like 75 years old, they're still doing their things because they understand that. They're like, it's not something like, hey, you're a master from now and on. Like, no, they the studied energy. their entire yeah. life, you know, in connection to what this art form really means, yeah. you know what I mean? Let me, let me tell you yeah. about my story about the Capoeira, right? So, uh, going back 90, 94, 95, I was in a crew called CBS, mm -hmm. which is um, kind of the me recitating the, the culture in Austin. There was no other crews. Breaking was dead. 
I brought in this crew called, we started this crew called CBS, right? But we were still half and half street, you know, so we were still kind of looked mm -hmm. on by the public like 60 drugs. 40, 60 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 60 40. So, you know, we were still getting into fights, you know, like, but then I found Mr. Rodrigo uh -huh. from Senor de Bonfim mm -hmm. at South Austin Rec. Got in there slowly, and that's how kind of got into the capoeira, right? So, learning how to sing. I mean, it's all, all styles. Yeah. Play, you you got to play, you got to learn how to play the instrument. So, I kind of started putting that into hip hop. So, well, mm. I'm going to start rhyming. Mm. You know, the instruments. I'm yeah. going to start playing with the DJs, you know, all styles, right? And then just, uh, this, the spiritual side of it kind of made me more positive into nature. Yeah. It got me, you know, like I got into into spiritual side and tuned to myself. So um, I wanted to get away from all the negative things mm -hmm. that my crew was doing. They didn't understand what I was trying to do. I said, yo, man, if we keep this up, we're going to either be dead mm -hmm. or we're going to be locked up. Mm -hmm. Ain't no future in it, right? So I got out. They're like, I'm walking away. CBS, no more. I was like, what do you mean? I said, y'all can continue to do CBS, you know. So we broke up. I t uh, stayed away from them for a little bit. I know uh, Rudy Rex and them started Capital Soul. And uh, John Paul and Emmy and they started Link Squad, which is more of a freestyle mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. uh, New Jack. And then Capital Soul became straight up all B-boys, right? Wow. <clears throat> That's when I met Raj mm. at the Rex, right? I've always, I'm from the Rex. We created a crew called Swing Team, right? And nonviolent. Raj, we came, if we get, if you see beef that I had, mm -hmm. you tell them to stay out of it. Me and Raj are gonna put out this fire. Mm. Before we were firefighters, <laughs> mm, we're nice. gonna put out the fire. If this beef comes from these all gangs, whatever is going on in the street, you let me and Raj handle it. We do the dealing, we'll do the talking, right? So the kids understood, all y'all gotta do, not kids, but they are our friends. This new crew, all you have to do is dance. But our, our persona, the way the public saw us, was thug still. We couldn't mm. get inside the clubs. How can I change this up? Capoeira, like mm. I was telling you, I gotta hide it. So we changed the way we dressed. Mm. No more tennis shoes, no more flip hats, no more baggy clothes. That's the only way we can get inside the club. And I got all that from Capoeira, because they hit the dance, mm -hmm. right? Because it was illegal yeah, for them yeah. to, mm -hmm. to play, You're right? So we're just going to dance. We're not going to train. Same thing us. We're coming in here. So I told the crew, we got to get inside the club first, and then get to know the DJs, get to know the club owners, change our relationships with Austin. Right before we were known to destroy the clubs. This time, my whole squad had to take capoeira. Right, so for from Senor de Bonfim, mm. Mr. Rodrigo, but he was freaking out like all these guys were doing. The, <laughs> what up? <laughs> they, they knew the tricks. Yeah. Right. So now they're, he was like, "But y'all got to do the the basic, the jingle, mm. right, and the music and all that." But slowly, my whole crew was learning all that. Mm -hmm. Right. But we slowly changed our persona where they would look at, we're now in, inside the clubs mm -hmm. and now uh, talking to the owners, can we do an event? And slowly the trust from was being built from the city mm -hmm. to, now we're, to now we've been doing it for 25 yeah. years yeah. and now we're doing it all over the, from, from Waterloo Park to wow. all the wrecks. That's beautiful. You know, they don't see us as a threat anymore, mm -hmm. but I, all that changed when I enter mm -hmm. Metro Rodriguez class. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's amazing because in the top of, of Capoeira, Capoeira was prohibited until 1930 in Brazil. So, you know, of course, it was invented by the slaves. Mm -hmm. So after, you know, the abolition, they mm -hmm. say, oh, okay, cool. So basically, you guys don't need to, to have, like, revolts no more. You don't have to, mm -hmm. you know, to fight. So... Capoeira was maintained by the OGs, yes. you know, like the older guys, you know. And of course, then the government say, oh, this is, it comes from black people, so this is illegal. So mm -hmm. we had like wow. repression, you know. 
Meanwhile, oh yeah, yeah, you can bring taekwondo, you can bring so many other yeah, elements, Brazil, fine. Yeah, you can you bring know? everything else. Oh, that is okay. So yeah. even even like in the 30s, in the 40s, was still prohibited in Brazil by yeah. law. And the Master Bimba, who is a capoeira, the most important name in capoeira, Master Bimba, he was the one that said, oh, okay, I'm gonna teach a lawyer, I'm gonna teach a doctor, I'm gonna bring this and that, yeah. you know. There Until he started teaching the president, and then the president, oh, wow, yeah, this is 100% genuine Brazilian, and this is, you know, why it's yeah. illegal. Yeah. And then from there, and then brings uh, Master João Grande to New York City. So if you see the way the house dancers from that era used to dance house and, and even rocking or hustle, it's all the origins from Capoeira, Angola, mm -hmm. that Master João Grande brought into it, New York City. And then, of course, the yeah, other message in the 70s, too. right? So, in the 70s in yeah. New York. Yeah. And then you see how everything is really connected. Yeah, it's because full circle. It's so I always circle. thought Capo, Capo, Capo I mean. is so much like hip hop. You know what I mean? It is. It it's came the from same, the streets. It is. The same yeah. thing. People looked at it like it was, a, it was nothing. Same philosophy, the yeah, same approach. Same thing. So mm -hmm. I, I was very drawn to it. But I always saw how, how they took Capoeira and made it yeah. uh, approachable. Mm -hmm. You know, they made it a dance. That's inclusive. They, they it's for everyone. It. And yeah. that's kind of like our tactics from back in the days and mm -hmm. to, to where we have it now. Because if I, if I go to Pakistan or, I mean, let's say Palestine, mm -hmm. you're going to find B-boys in Palestine, Israel, whatever you go, and you're going to find Capoeira too. Because to Capoeira and hip-hop, you don't really need to go to a particular academy or school. Nothing. You don't have to have it anywhere. Anywhere. But, but yeah. it's, 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 the cipher. The it's circle, there. Right? So it's, it's for the people. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, if it's hip hop, is high infinite power, healing our people. Capoeira is the same approach. Capoeira yeah. is the heritage of humanity. You know what I mean? Like it's around the planet. But so look, the everything's whole connected that, in that the, whole that, the circle. Yeah. The battles. It's straight up fight. The Capoeira yeah. is the same thing. Yeah. How you enter. I was like, yo, it was yeah. very, very similar, but it was just. Breaking is the U.S. Uh, version. Oh yeah, totally. You know, the totally. new school version. A hundred percent. Yo, so I got. I, we're, we're, you know, man, this is crazy because it, it feels like everything's just so connected. You know, mm -hmm. and then like after, like time and years, like that that connection never changed. It was always there, right? But it's our awareness, mm -hmm. right? Like of that yeah. connection, being part of that connection and being in it, right? So I I, I think right now, like I, I think breaking. I feel like breaking is kind of like at that point where the majority of the general public think breaking is still something like, yo, you're just like, just underground kids like spinning on cardboard, right? Mm. When in reality, like we are, obviously we all know here, like this has been a, a, a dance with the international, you know, uh, circuit of events and, and, and market that, that's been strong for the last mm. 20 years, consistently strong, right? And now, you know, when they go into the Olympics and whatnot, it's, it's, it's really going to be in the eyes of the general public. So I think right now, like, this is, this is the time for breaking to be understood as, as, as like Apoeta, like martial yes. arts, right? Yes. But it's up to us to have these conversations, what right? And educate, like, the public. So we, so we tell them, like, hey, this is our story. This is the mm -hmm. connection. These are the roots. These well, are it, the yes, foundation. It's, it's, the, it's the older guys that don't give up on it. Like the mestres, they're seventies, <coughs> but what if they stopped in their thirties? Yeah. Right now you have kids and us in the U.S. singing about these mestres mm. because um, I don't know. Remember on that documentary when Marcy, I said like, um, if a soul goes to heaven, if the people talks about you, your soul is dancing. Mm. But if you did bad on earth, nobody talks about you. Forget about you. So your soul is not dancing. Mm. When Capoeira. Every time we're in a hold up, we're singing about these guys. Mm -hmm. So those mestres, I know, are dancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So us, the more we get older, the more we help the community, like our kids, our academy, they're going to grow up talking about us. Mm -hmm. Definitely. They're going to sing songs about us. Hopefully they make songs about us. Right? <laughs> but it's, it's <laughs> <that>. <laughs> They're going to make raps. Hopefully yeah. it's a little different than the music that yeah, I, yeah, I hear them listening but, to now. In, it's going to be in their raps, it's going to be in their yeah. music, it, it's, it's going to be their, in their creation, it's going to be in their drawings because yeah. they're gonna, we're embedded in, what, in their art. But if we're not there, we don't deserve that, right? I mean, that's, and, and that's how you see how important it is to represent everywhere you go because, you, like you say, some people might see you just like, oh yeah, you guys dance on cardboard or whatever, or rap BBC One or Olympics. 
Like for me, I go to so many different environments with my own, uh, you know, luggage, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I just, I recently did America's Got Talent, right? Mm -hmm. And it was my very first show that I grabbed the mic and I had to talk to the judge and the audience and eventually the cameras mm. before I actually do my performance. So I was like, wow. Everybody's like, okay, all the way from Negin. It's different. Negin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I got the mic. Oh, first, Ooh, I got to talk, talk first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, and, and I had like a few minutes to just put the word out there. Like, hey, yeah. this is what I do. It's breaking. It's in the Olympics. Yes, I'm, I'm the world champion in Red Bull BC1. I mentioned everything possible to real. And then people were just like, wow, I didn't know. Wow, wow, wow. Like, I could feel the energy, you know exactly. what I mean? So that's why it's so important sometimes. Like, people are like, what are you going to do? America's Got Talent, you know? Like, I'm there somehow competing with singers and the other different talents, which is yeah. beautiful. But I'm representing, you know, what I do. Yeah. And guess what stands out in my performance? Breaking, capoeira, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, this and that. I pass, I advance to the next level. I'm like, yeah. oh, what am I gonna do again? I cannot do breaking again. Oh, I'm gonna bring the bedding bow. Yeah, and like, yes. we'll be like, what instrument is that? What do you play? What that yeah, means? And exactly. so and so it's like, okay, I already have another vocabulary as as you know, as yeah. talent to that's to it. be given. And um that's what I mean. Like no matter where you go, maybe people have the like the ignorance to say, like, oh breaking is is, is that thing that you do on the street. But as more you go to different platforms and you highlight how skillful yeah. and the talent that you have, that bring awareness mm -hmm. to society, you know, that like or not, you yeah. know, they, they're gonna hear and about us, they understand. The, uh, the older we get, yeah. right? The older we get is our voice is bigger. Totally. We're men now, we're not kids anymore. Totally. And we still have that pride that we take with us, with this culture, right? Uh, Chale, uh, it was talking to me, so I need a quote from you. Uh, I got one quote, was that? Breaking saved my life. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would not be here if it wasn't for breaking. Wow. I would not be a firefighter mm -hmm. saving yeah. lives if it wasn't for breaking. Because I would probably be locked up mm -hmm. with all the net. I needed something. I got, yeah. We have a lot of energy. Yeah. That's like wrong. When you dance at your age, like, imagine if I wasn't dancing, <laughs> where do you think that energy will go? Like I used to say, Omar, oh, yeah. on your face or on the floor. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Regardless, it's gonna go somewhere, right? So I think at this age, he, he, he said, you guys, I said, it saved your life, but you also, you guys have been saving lives mm. for years now. Exactly. So when we are proud, as like a doctor, a doctor saves lives, mm -hmm. but we the same lives. way. lives. Yeah. So we, when we have that pride, it's only us yeah. that we have our culture and us will have to stand up and say, I am proud to be a B-boy. Mm -hmm. I am proud for this culture and what we have done throughout these years. And that's, totally. I think the next generation will like remember it and mm -hmm. you know, it's up to us. Yo, just, it, totally. Go ahead, man. Oh man, it's, it's just this, Time, like timing this is this is perfect this yes. conversation is perfect because uh, if you just look at just the delivery I mean just the how everything has been delivered that we've talked about from history up until now it's 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 the approach it's how it's like what your audience needs and how you get it to them mm -hmm. and so it's a delicate process and it has taken many people to fail over and over and again for people like us to succeed. Yeah. And so, in moving forward with what we're doing with Hope for Hip Hop, we literally have had to take that delicate approach with the delivery because one, we have one shot at this. We, we reside here, we've all come back here. The old saying of we can come home, you can always come home. We don't get a chance to see how it comes to fruition if we choose to fail. So we have to succeed in any and all things that we do. So just with the, how the slaves, you know, were in a position to when they had to be delicate with their delivery mm -hmm. and how it actually came to its fruition and what the approach was and who had to be involved. The same thing in the process of your delivery from your life and how you wear your life on your sleeve. These kids see it every day. Yeah. Your passion and your energy that you had to actually frame and form and literally say, 
I need to stay, take a step away from myself and look at myself and yeah. understand who I am before I can actually approach people and show them who I am. Yeah. Because it's amazing. We, we can listen to people till, we're, till they're blue in the face, mm -hmm. but it's what they provide us visually in the aesthetics that literally allow people to take that first step towards it. So I just hope in moving forward with everything that we all do just in life, yeah. that we just continue to be that adult, be that person that wants to understand the audience first, because mm -hmm. not everyone's gonna be receptive to our delivery. No, but of course. Can't well, stop, won't stop. Yeah, what, can't what, stop, won't what, stop. What's crazy about that though is like, with, with it, it's not just like, the message that we, you know, obviously it's important, like what we say and what we do and whatnot. But the the I think what makes Breaking special is is the dance itself, man. It's the energy itself, right? And like just what you were saying, like you know, I, I took a lot of times when when I was traveling and stuff like that to knowledge of self, self awareness, right? To to really like learn how to build up my own self esteem, my self concept, my self worth, all these things, right? Because one thing I always knew about breaking was that it's ve it has a lot of energy, it carries a lot of energy, right? But what you do with that energy is also very powerful. Mm -hmm. You need to be responsible, right? So like Rome jokes, right? We would go to the clubs, right? And, and, and we're just trying to get down and people want to do stupid things like, you know, throw a drink on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. And so Rome's response is like, yo, I can put this energy on your face or I, I can just put it in a cipher, mm -hmm. right? So. And there's Take, 30 of us. Yeah, and there's 30 wow. of us and two of you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and, but, win. <laughs> but, it's that, but it's that energy, yo. It's like, yo, everywhere. And I'm the same way again. When mm -hmm. I go somewhere, right, whether it's, you know, the smallest or the biggest venue or mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're doing, it's like, yo, I'm giving all my, my energy. Mm -hmm. And in that energy is, is, is my spirituality, mm -hmm. is my essence, my emotions, yep. you yep. know? Yep. And, and, and I think that's why when people see us dance, people see people break, it's not just the moves, it's the energy, right? Exactly. And that's what I try to tell people, like, yo, you don't understand, like, in this dance, it's so much more than just what you see with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And some people get it, and some people don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so gonna... funny because if you look, everything that's entertaining, like, even, okay, if you go to uh, Harvard, if you go to university and they study Egyptology, right? So how they build the pyramids, and oh, sacred geometry, and that's what we do all them day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. like, oh, you guys talk about right. sacred geometry. We do that when we do a freeze. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, so just like the angles that we hit and yeah. how we connect with the music, which is mathematics. Yes. Yeah. You know, and just by being upside down, we spin on our head. Okay. It's not a head spin, like the like how your synapses from your brain just works, yes. and you listen to the music, and you know, it's just like. And then I tell like to doctors and yeah. PhDs and and. And they're just like, oh my God, I didn't well, know that. Trip and out. he's be teaching yeah, yeah. Harvard, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he has no idea what we actually experience yeah. in a physical, spiritual form. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you start using I said, words you know like, what it like takes <laughs> for you to spin on vector, your head. The vector, the you know x and the y axis. Yeah. They're yeah. going, wait, wait. <laughs> Do tell. Tell yeah. me more. Tell me more. It's like, man. So like the, just the just the mathematics on spinning five times on your on yeah. your palms upside down. Yeah. 40 Velocity. Now. Yeah, 40 now, but back 40, then, five right? was yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, older folks would be like, that, is that even possible? It takes time and science for us to figure it out, but these yeah. kids figured it out, right? Another beautiful thing about breaking is, like, I can go to any country in the world and don't speak the language, but I can mm -hmm. hang out with them in months by the time I'm speaking the language oh, already. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, it's just, there's no borders, there's no colors. Our colors become this part mm -hmm. of our style. Yeah. You know? That's why they ask me, have you ever experienced um, any uh, uh, discrimination? Oh, I, I just got through an interview, that, that, that discrimination or racism and uh, breaking. I said, no, not really, because all of us as one and our language and our color is just part of our style. Universal language, of course. It is. It's, it's our delivery. It's the people yep. on the outside we it's experience. The outside <laughs> don't, uh, it's the it's outside that don't understand. I it's said, the yeah. influencer. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> I said, like, I've never felt that because every time I show up at a, a restaurant, there's 40 of us. Mm -hmm. So we good. If you're hating and wondering what they're doing and you don't like what we do, I don't really care because I have 40 guys mm -hmm. here that loves me and they're all my brothers and sisters. Yeah. And yeah. that's all that matters to me, right? 
It, it's not till like later on, whenever I got older, where I kind of felt it. I was like, but I never cared because the pride and honor I have for what we have is nothing can break it. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing can break that that pride. I was like, it doesn't matter what you think of me, bro. I'm I'm forever fresh. <laughs> I am cool. <laughs> Hashtag and that, forever, forever young. fresh. And that's forever the fresh. mentality. Even growing up poor, right? I have the reason I have three pairs of jeans, two, one pair of shoes, but. I had to make it look cool every time I had to go. You got 20 pairs of pants. Yeah. You still look corny. Yeah. Us, we're so broke that we had to make it look fresh. The shoes Creative. had to make the, the hats, the laces, you know. Everything has to be creased up because every little detail gave it that much value that now that everyone is rocking it. Everybody yeah. wants our stuff Facts. because it's the value that we put in it. Yeah. Facts. It might be just one pair of shoes, but those shoes are the Worth a lot of money, man. Yeah. Yeah. How many because different the, laces you got, can you have? Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey you, you done with those shoes? Clean them up. Can I yes. have the laces? Hey. Oh, wait, today? No laces. What about the Pumas when, you know, you get to change them up, the colors? Oh, yeah, and, the colors. You, know, you never went too dark too soon because you can't get rid of the dark. Yeah. Can't go back. Can't go back. And then that's, it's just the pride and honor. And even till now, it's like, it's, it's hip hop. We make it the way it is. It's art. Yeah. We make so it flavor like universal you know, language. Universal man. language. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. That's it. That's it. And yeah. I wouldn't trade it for anything. No regrets, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Facts. Yo, Nagin. Yo, brother. Thank you for coming here. Yeah. That was quick. Some time yo, with us. Yeah. 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 I can't go here all day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. trust me. Yeah. Hey, we, we still build it. I think we like, need to have just just dope. a talk so on Brazil. It's a It's a blessing. It's a blessing for you to be here because it brought me back. Yeah. You know, to the it's couple that energy, with it, man. Yeah, I'm telling yeah, you, like yeah. I, I forgot all about that. It's you know, because yeah. yeah. us, we just keep we're so busy with our everyday life that we keep moving forward. And, you know, we just keep filming without even looking at the footage. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, of course. That's what I tell this guy. We just moment. keep filming. Like we have footage, we just keep filming that we don't have time to look back. But when then, when someone like you comes back, I'm like, okay, reflection, bro. We reflect, yeah, brother. and yeah. it goes back, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful, man. Appreciate Yo, you, brother. We got I love you guys, in town. Man. Appreciate we'll you. We'll see you guys <laughs> yes, at Red Bull yes, BC1 yes. in August. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're out. Word. Oh, Yo, my, my brother. brother. Yo, it was good to see you, bro.